drives and welcome to one of my heroes not miles although he's pretty cool well, I don't know. <laughs> this is the tuscan s mark ii made famous in swordfish this thing is biblical it is so cool it's fast it's <laughs> yeah that's what it is well guys I'm going to show you around this car. We're going to continue our drive. Have a look at the styling. This is going to be a brilliant day. Good morning guys and welcome back to Damo Drives bringing real reviews to real people and answering some of those questions other channels might not talk about. I'm back down here at HPC Classics in Eastbourne to bring you guys the next episode in the series about TVR. Now in episode one, I drove the T350, which is actually over there. If you haven't seen that review, I'll put a card above. So go and watch that after this video. I thought that was an incredible car and my first experience in a TVR. Now, I watched a film called Swordfish with John Travolta and he drove a Mark I Tuscan in that. I fell in love with that car. It looked incredible, it sounded amazing. It just looked a very, very cool car. That was back in, I think 2000. And even then it looked amazing. Now this is actually the Mark II, 2005. And it's the Tuscan S, so it's the more powerful revised version of that car. But even today, if you put this up against any modern supercar, I think this would actually stand out and you would not be surprised if this was a brand new car, but it's not, it's, it's almost a classic. But look at the thing, it is beautiful. Now, round the front, if we look at it compared to the Mark I, Mark I had four lights that ran up the side here. This has got two and they're enclosed and that was for aerodynamic reasons because they have improved the aero and the mechanical side of this car over the Mark I. Now lower down, this is the air intakes over on the left hand side and right hand side of the number plate. Now on the Mark I, the air intake was along the front here and there was like circles cut out of it. To me, that was a bit more distinctive. That look is aging a bit, but I think it does stand out a bit more than what we've got here. But this is more of a timeless look at it. I think it looks a bit Aston Martin this side. It's probably something to do with the color as well, but it is a beautiful looking car. These gorgeous lines that are possible due to the fact it's made out of fiberglass. The air is pulled in at the front and vented out through this large gap over the bonnet, over the roof and out the back. But this is a pretty car. It's almost, to me, a piece of artwork. But artwork that, if you don't respect it, it's gonna chew you up and spit you out the other side because this thing is a bit of a beast. It's traditionally TVR formula. We've got a lightweight car at around 1250 kilos, a big straight six engine, lots of power, rear wheel drive and absolutely no driver aids. The driver aids are your left and right feet and what you feel in your bottom. <laughs> so whatever happens out on the road when we drive it, it's down to me. I've got nothing that's gonna save me if I do something a bit stupid. The side profile is just as pretty as the front. We've got no door handles, so we've got these lovely curves that run all the way down the side. It's not like a modern car where you get strong angles with a swage line. This is just curved and beautiful. The only interruption we have in the styling here is the large gap where the door folds in. But even so, that I think breaks up the side and just gives it a nice aggressive look. And the fact you know this is a TVR, no door handles at all. And we've got 18 inch alloys on here with Discs which are 322 at the front and 298 at the rear. The same brake setup as we found in the T350. And those brakes were probably the best brakes I've ever experienced on a road car. They have so much feel and are so strong as well. I think the fact the car weighs the same as a Ford Fiesta 
has got something to do with that, but I'm glad there's lots of fill. No ABS at all, you need to be able to fill everything that's going on on the road in order to, well, have your own <laughs> ABS. My ABS is my foot. But even so, look at this thing. I love the look of it. If you thought the front was good looking, I'd say the rear is even better. And to be honest, most people will end up seeing the rear of this car because it is pretty rapid. We've got the integrated ducktail spoiler, which comes on the S only. L-shaped lights, a rear curvy, lovely looking bumper, and lower down, the signature twin exhaust. When that four litre straight six is on full chat, it's like a choir singing out the back of this car. It's an absolutely fantastic. Now this being the Targa roof, it needs to come off and it fits nicely in the boot. You press the Tuscan S badge, it opens up and there's a special way of storing both the window and the roof in here. And there's still room for a bit of storage. So it's a practical car that looks amazing and is very, very fast. So we're gonna have a quick look around inside because again, it's our work on the outside and the inside. And then I'm gonna tell you some unusual facts about the Tuscan. There are many unusual facts about all TVRs because TVR don't do rule books. Well, they do, it's their own one. Uh, so welcome to the inside of a Tuscan S and what a place it is to be. The outside was a piece of artwork and that continues in here. It's full of leather, Alcantara, milled aluminium parts. It's a very, very special place to be. The seats are comfy. You can actually change the bolster in them. There's like a little pump down by my side of the seat. It's like the sort of pump you find at the doctors when they take your blood pressure. Very lightweight and does the job. Nothing fancy at all. So we start off, we've got an Alcantara steering wheel. There's a few buttons on here to change like windscreen wipers, lights, etc. Across the top, again, over the top for a TVR, although eccentric and over the top is something that goes hand in hand with the brand of TVR. We've got this drilled piece of aluminium with small holes and that's the warning lights and things like that, petrol, for the car. Just a lovely, lovely look. And then you've got the instrument binnacle, which is like looking through a periscope. <laughs> it's like really small. It's more like a pair of binoculars, I should say, with the information there. And you can change what you see in it behind the steering wheel, some buttons. An air vent down the bottom. Now going across to the center here, because the engine is so far back, the transmission tunnel is back, and that's under here, it offers a great bit of separation between the driver and the passenger. Aluminium gear stick for the five speed. Alcantara little area here, it is lovely, 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 lovely. I do like it in here. Leaning across to this central section here, more milled aluminium parts. They don't pick anything out of anyone else's part bin, they just make everything themselves. Some are obvious what they do, some are Maybe not quite so obvious. This one here is for your fan speed. This one here, I've absolutely no idea what that does. There's some lights here with, yeah, I don't know what that does. Put in the comments down there if you know what this one does. These here are for your windows. And now this one, which has nothing written on it whatsoever. Again, I'll show you what that does. So if we, shut the door and you want to get out. There's no door handles. So that's what this is. This opens your door. So you twist it to the right and your door opens. Yeah, a TVR strangeness thing there. And the various TVRs, they're all in different places. Sometimes you get buttons and switches, button on the door, maybe across here. It's completely and utterly bonkers where things are actually located. Out the front, this is the most important bit for me. The seats are supportive. The Alcantara steering wheel is lovely and you've got this fantastic view of the wheel arches. It's a bulging bonnet. It is a very spectacular view. I've never seen a bonnet or a view out the front quite like that. It looks like a wave curving over here. And then you've got the vents there that allow the hot air out. 
it is just a very, very dramatic view out the front of this car. Glove box or shelf, as we should say in here. Again, leather in there, it's carpet. And then the end of it, they've actually got this very fancy looking drilled aluminium part at the end there. Completely, again, over the top. But I love it. It is such a cool place to be in here. The pedal box is, as well is aluminium. It's like a racing box, long throw on the accelerator, which means it's easy to modulate the power. Lovely feeling brakes. Quite a heavy clutch, not as much as the T350, which actually had a sports clutch in it, but it feels, oh, it feels very special in here. Now there's a few oddities about this car. There are many oddities about TVR in general. And I'm gonna show you some of the unusual things you might not know about this car. TVR love a good button and in some unusual places with some unusual functionality. Down here in this little shelf area that's not the easiest to get to, we've got a button with B and you turn that and that changes the brightness of your instrument binnacle. We've got one with a C, which changes the speed of the climate control. And then we have one with a V. Now, what on earth could that do? Volume? Yeah, V is for volume, but it's the volume of your indicators, not the volume of the stereo. Only a TVR, you'd actually have the idea. Let's change the volume of our indicators. There are no door handles on the outside of the car. So how do you get in? Well, there's a button underneath the wing mirror. You push that and it opens the door. Simple, really. How many bonnets do you think this car's got? One? No, of course not. There's two. We've got a small one at the front, which is all your serviceable parts. And the second, where the engine is, is under the main one. But you can't get to the engine because it is bolted down. TVR don't think you'd ever need to get to the engine. Why would you? Hmm. This car is actually illegal in America because it hasn't got any safety or driver aids. That is pretty bonkers. When Swordfish came out, they were getting 10 inquiries, serious inquiries a day to buy this car from the US. But they did nothing about it. I think they could have made an absolute killing if they had to put airbags, a couple of things in, maybe just for the US market. But now this is turning into a classic you can import one of these into the state. So if you want a slightly mad, unhinged piece of artwork to drive around in, now is the time to come and buy one. So you come out in the morning and your TVR won't start. What do you do? Well, obviously you undo the bolts on the bonnet, you lift it up and you jump start it. Nope, you don't do that at all. The battery is under here and you have to have a special adapter with an Anderson plug on it and you can plug it into there. It gets worse though, if you want to change the battery on the other hand, you need to jack the car up, take the wheel off, and then you can get to it. Wow, that is an unusual place to put a battery. You've gone to the petrol station to fill up and there's no fuel cap either side of the car. Where's it gone? Well, it's in the boot, obviously. So you lift it up, there's a cap over on the left hand side, unscrew that, fill your car up, make sure you don't chuck fuel all over the lovely carpeted boot of your car and well, that's it. Sure. As a bit of rides brilliantly. We didn't really use many revs then either. That's proper sounding straight six. It does go, yeah. Nicely. Pop it now, it's got nice and warm and... Yeah, it should only get better, but as you feel it handles really nicely. Brakes are really firm. What have we got on here, brake-wise? APs again. Ah, oh, um, just like I love the, those. Uh, Fantastic You can feel the slightly more poke. Yeah. Yeah, the low, low end torque does want to go. This car's only done 28,000 miles as well, so it's, uh, it's that it's rasp as you get up, isn't it? The exhaust, it engine that climbs, rasp on the exhaust, bang! It's like, looks amazing. It's mo moving art, isn't it? There aren't many cars that you know, move your emotions in the same way as something like this. 
You don't even need to be going fast to enjoy it, really. Um, you, can, you can see why these are sort of known as... Besides the Sagaris, this is sort of the Halo car. Having become famous in the Swordfish movie. Oh, yes. Um, you know, people just have a, a love for them. So we'll, we'll give us a beans in first. Picks up. Yeah. You can feel that. That has definitely got more shove than the T350. Yeah. It's I think it's loads. the more torquey, probably as well. Yeah, I think it, you can sort of feel it low down. Um, the T350 is revving. I mean, like now we're only on a, a touch of throttle. The T350 wants revving to get the best out of it, whereas this has got the front low down. Um, a lot of these have had 4.5 rebuilds yeah. uh, by Dom and Powers, the team, and they are, I mean, obviously even quicker, um, circa 450 horsepower. Um, <laughs> as you can imagine, they really, are, they really are even modern supercar baiters. Um, they just don't weigh anything, these as well. Yeah, these are a bit heavier than T350, but it's still less than a Ford Fiesta. It's still an awful lot lighter than almost every modern yeah. supercar. They've got huge numbers. Most of the you know, modern things, even McLaren's weigh you know, 1,600, 1,700 kilos. And that, by my estimation, isn't light. It's not a sports car. Right. You know, yes, they're a supercar, but their engines aren't much larger. They're just bedecked with lots of electronics and things that add weight. Um, computers and stuff to try and get you around corners quicker. You don't have the uh, skill yourself. Yeah, that extra weight, you know, it just drags you wide on corners and things like that, doesn't it? And then brakes and yeah, this has got some serious turning, so you'll probably find when you first start piloting, um, you'll find that the steering is quite bitey. Um, tons of running grip. Hop out and have a go. Yeah, definitely. It's a... Oh! <laughs> Jesus! Oh, great view out the front already. I'm, again, I've got a better view here with the bonnet. It seems more bulbous and bulging than the T350 as well. Yeah, it's definitely got more bulging lines. Yeah. That kick in the yeah. It's pretty savage. I mean, it's still going to be careful because, like I said, we it's going to bite you on the ass if you don't treat it with some respect. Oh, yes, especially as the tyres aren't warm, there are going to be damp patches around. Yeah, we'll. Uh, We're just potter to start with and then get accustomed to it. Potter within reason as you do in a TVR. That pickup, the throttle response is wonderful though. It's fantastic. It's just on Instant. and then, yeah. Is it, you can see why I'm not really into cars with turbochargers, even if, even if they're modern ones. No. You don't get that kind of response. From it's that, and I find with this that the brakes are the things that really set this apart. The AP racing brakes on this are... They're fantastic. They're, they're, they're so different. They're designed for race cars, so they're, they're really, really mighty. And you've got all the feeling of modulation. Um, again, unlike a, a modern, heavily servo-assisted set, where the car's doing most of the work for you, this, you can feel everything you're doing. It's you know, me, It feels like it? you're yeah. actually putting the pads to the disc yourself. Um, I feel, this is lovely, but these seats, like, they're really, really comfortable, supportive. You're cocooned in this side. Steering wheel is just... Is it everything, I, is it everything you'd hoped it'd be after all these years and wanted to drive on? I'd say better, Yeah. if anything. I see John Travolta, although you are better looking than John Travolta, so... I'll, 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 I'll take that, but I know it's just lies. <laughs> but he is about 80. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. I've got youth on my side. Well, yeah. something like that. I just don't know how much more you can push it. It does feel so tight yeah. together. 
Yeah, that's uh, that picks up. Wow, a bit moist under the trees, so I'm gonna back it off a bit and then. I'd be doing exactly the same, don't you? Yeah. Worry. <laughs> now, that view out the front is absolutely stunning. I love the fact you can see the air, while well, the vents out the front, and like you said earlier, it's, it's art on wheels. Yeah. Pick up was in third. That was insane. Didn't even this is a hundred was it 190 mile an hour top speed on this thing. I've heard well rumours that it will do nearer 200, but I don't think. I think 196, 197 is sort of top out on the gearbox. I think gearbox is the limiting factor. To be, to be fair, um, I would imagine if you had a swap around the final drive or you know, fifth ratio, you'd probably. Be Really, they've got so much power and weight ratio. They have, they're uh, just insane, these things, really. Now, would, this is a good test. This bit of road is awful. It is rough, isn't it? Give you a good idea. I mean, if you plant it, you'll probably lose traction. Okay. No, you don't say that. What, like that? Yeah, that just spun up the back ever so slight. Yeah, it started. Oh, this is fantastic. I don't know whether it's because this is my second TBR, but I just feel a bit more comfortable in this one now. I think this is because it's a slightly larger car and because it's got the lighter controls, it's it's a little easier to drive. I'm not man enough to, for the other one yet. <laughs> oh, it's, the, it's properly alive though, isn't oh, it? It's bloody brilliant. So I'm saying at the start, you know, never meet your heroes, but I'm glad I have. My hero is cool. Yeah, your <laughs> hero is definitely cool. Yeah. I do I, like those pops. I doubt there'll be much much cooler cars than we're seeing around here today. No. No, there's there's practical cars. What's that now? This is pretty practical with the boat, it's good well, sized boat and like all TVRs, there's yeah. loads of space in it. I've got tons of room, you've got tons of room, we're both what, six foot tall. Yeah. We've got loads of space back here if you want to go on a long, you know, long trip, you've got additional space for more overnight bags. You can easily do a week away. Lots of people do trips to Spain and whatnot in their TVRs. I think that'd be lovely this. I mean the only thing you'd want would be cruise control, I suppose if you were on a long trip, but other than that, you could go there really. Yeah. But again, you won't be in the car for very long because you can do lots of miles per hour. <laughs> cut down the amount of time you're sat in it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like the fuel consumption may be. I don't know what, what's it like. They're not bad. Um, we did again the T350. We did a, a sort of test and Kev, Kev's done a few track days whereby um, he's worked out what he's at, you know mileage he's covered. Which way should we go? Uh, I go right. Right. Um, Where's the stalks on the right hand side? What's it doing there? You press it down and then you press it down again to turn it off. Um, Obviously. Yeah. So I think it worked out around 30 mpg ish. Um, I think it was down to about 24 on the track day, which is hammering it the whole day. That's not bad really for what you're getting. Because they're so light, that's really good. I mean, if you're in Ferraris, um, I mean, IM6, you're looking at. MPG. So again, even like my Griff 500 on a run, you get like 25 MPG, which is way more than the heavier cars. Um, my Chimera 400 will get 30. So that's good. I'm trying to work out where the rev counter is. Um, it's there. Where? Showing you in digital. 37, 38, what? <laughs> They say don't meet your heroes. I've met my hero and it is bloody brilliant. It sounds cool, it looks awesome and I want one. I really, really want one. So, Miles, thanks again from you and APC Classics for giving me the chance to drive this. We've got more TVR content to come. So make sure you subscribe to go and 
V Lewis fight when that comes out. I'll put a card up here for the T350. And on that note, guys, one more. I'm going to slow down, put it in second, the straight bit of road, and. Thanks for watching guys.